you know, we've been talking about food in terms of the vegetables, fruits, and grains that are around the outside of the store. Of course, you know that some people get all of their nutrition from vegetarian and vegan sources. Our community spotlight this month will show us the differences and explain the reasons behind this growing trend. Northwest Veg is a nonprofit organization that promotes this lifestyle, and they're going to show us how to prepare some delicious and nutritious meals from the perimeter of the store. No meat in sight, vegetarian delight. Um, tonight we're here at the Northwest Veg Potluck, and this is an event that happens weekly, monthly. Can you tell me about it? We, we have a couple of potlucks. We have one down in Portland that uh, happens on the third Sunday of every month, and then this one up in Vancouver that's on the last um, Thursday of the month. It's an opportunity for people to, to who are, you know, maybe they're interested in this, they're just not sure about vegetarian diets. Uh, those people can come here and then they can see a whole bunch of good food because, I mean, we have some really good cooks here. Northwest Veg is a group that support, supports people trying to move towards a plant-based diet. And there are really three reasons why, we, uh, why people might make that choice. Um, there are environmental reasons, uh, there are reasons dealing with the way we treat animals. And then, of course, there's the nutrition aspect. Uh, there's a, you know, generally, although you can eat a stupid vegetarian diet, generally vegetarian diets tend to be healthier. You have less fat, you have more fiber. You know, all the nutritionists say you should be eating whole grains, you know, lots of fiber, lots of foods like that for, you know, various reasons. Reduce our chance of heart disease, reduce chance of uh, diabetes, uh, certain cancers are related to the, the diets that you have. Um, and, you know, that's, if you're trying to avoid those sorts of things, the, a vegetarian diet is something that really generally helps a lot. Peter, can you tell me um, a little bit about the differences between vegan and vegetarian? Well, there, there's some terms we use to sort of put people into, into you know, classifications, but you know, there's really a whole continuum for people. Vegans are ones who, who uh, do not eat any animal products. Vegetarians do not eat any slaughter products. So a vegetarian will eat, uh, could eat, for instance, cheese and eggs and things like that, but they wouldn't eat meat, they wouldn't eat chicken, they wouldn't eat fish. There are a lot of people who call themselves vegetarians who eat fish, but I mean, if you're using the, de the literal definition of not eating slaughter products, um, you know, that's usually what most people refer to vegetarians as someone who, who, who uh, will not eat anything that's, that you know, was alive at some point. There are people who are vegan strictly for dietary reasons. You know, the, the people who are interested in nutrition, for instance, that would be the only thing that they, they'd want to cut the animal products out of their diet, but they wouldn't necessarily care about the animal products that they're using for other, other things. But there are a lot of people who really are into trying to reduce their impact overall. You know, the environmental and the, the way we treat animals, those are, are things that affect more than just diet. Uh, so you could have people who are really interested in vegan lifestyle. So you can have a vegan diet, you can have a vegan lifestyle. Oh, every single reason. I don't think there's a reason not to be. The environment, one thing, animals, and health. It, you know, I just don't see a reason to justify not being there. Uh, I discovered Northwest Veg through a bunch of trade shows. They always had a little booth there, and I would go and take some literature to pass out to my friends. And it was actually at Veg Fest that I found out, oh, they, may have, they have potlucks. So, you know, this is pretty much speaks for itself. It's been an educational experience, and... Um, a good chance to get recipes that I can try at home, taste the food. The um, presentations are very interesting, especially for me, kind of new to the vegetarian and vegan eating. So I've enjoyed that in a cooking demonstration. They have a talk or a cooking demonstration or some sort of a discussion at each of these things too. So it's good food and it's also good, good knowledge. You know, if you're looking to try and eat a good, healthy diet, uh, whole grains, whole foods, uh, high fiber, you know, these are the sorts of things that can help lower cholesterol, for instance. You know, cholesterol, well, the bodies make it themselves, but also we get a whole lot of cholesterol in the things we eat. And it's only present in animals. It's not present in plant foods. Um, some, a lot of the fats that are present in animals, saturated fats, they're, uh, they're ones that are, you know, 
lead to potential problems like um, intestinal cancers and so on that have been tied to, to, um, to animal fats. Uh, you know, you can really have a much healthier diet. Now, you do have to be careful on a pure vegan diet because uh, uh, you need, for instance, make sure you're getting enough vitamin B12. It's not made by plants, it's not made by animals, it's made by bacteria. But if people who are eating animals, you know, those animals have a lot of bacteria in them that are generating those, and, or, or they get the bacteria out of the soil and they're eating different things. And so people get, you only need very tiny amounts of vitamin B12, but people who are not vegetarians get it from those sources. Nowadays we wash all our fruits and vegetables, so if you're vegan, you're probably not getting B12 because you're not getting the bacteria. So you got to, a vegan does have to look, you know, if you're not having any animal products, you do have to make sure you're getting B12. Only small amounts are needed. And, you know, you can find it in so many different products. I get in my rice milk, for instance. Um, it's in, in nutritional yeast. There are lots of different products that have it out there. So if, even if you don't want to take a, you know, a vitamin pill every day, which a lot of people recommend that you do that, you know, just make sure that you have it somewhere in your diet um, and you should be fine. That's pretty much the only one that's, that's big. There are a lot of other things that are concerned for vegetarians and vegans, but they're also concerned for the public as a whole, too, because you know, things like vitamin D. We have a lot of vitamin D, D deficiency up here because we just don't get the sunlight, which you know, sunlight is one way that you, you manufacture vitamin D. And in the winter, we just don't have that up here. But that, so that's true for vegetarians. It's also true for non-vegetarians. You got to look for making sure you got sources of vitamin D in your diet if you're not able to get out there and get get sun, uh, which we can't do in, in the winter out here. First, we're going to add this: some oregano uh -huh. <laughs> and some bay leaves. You can add at this point thyme, basil, or rosemary. Whatever you, would, whatever you would prefer. One thing I'd be interested to know is how do you replace the nutrition that is lost when you don't eat meat? The question people who are vegetarian always get asked is where do you get your protein? Because people know that animal you know, products do have a lot of protein in them. Plant products have a lot of protein in them too. Matter of fact, a vegetarian can probably get too much protein if they're not careful on how much they eat. You know, they, we, we think of that you need a lot of protein. Um, but you know, stop and think for a second. When is the time in your life when you're going the fastest? When you're a baby, right? I mean, you're doubling your weight in, in 180 days. And then you think, well, if you're growing the fastest, isn't that when you need the most protein? And then you stop and think, okay, what do you feed a baby? Well, mother's milk, right? How much protein's in mother's milk? It's only 6% of the calories are protein. There's more protein in potatoes than there is in mother's milk. So, you know, why do you think when you're older, when you're not growing as fast, that you need 20% protein in your diet? You know, it, body really doesn't need that much protein. It actually causes problems when you have that much protein. Um, there's a matter of fact, there's a famous diet called the Atkins diet that people go on to lose weight that's a really high protein diet. And I think the reason why the Atkins diet works is it actually makes you a little sick because your body has to really do a lot to take to, to digest the proteins. Um, you got to strip off the amino group from it and you, you uh, you form these ketones when that happens and those things can really, they can make you kind of sick. Of course, being sick, you don't eat as much and you lose weight, but not the way I want to lose weight. The, the environmental aspects, uh, you know, when you're, when you're growing food, if you can eat the food directly, the plants directly, that's a whole lot more efficient than going and eating, you know, feeding that food to animals and then uh, eating the animals. It's, you know, it's on the order of like 10 calories in for every calorie you get out when you're feeding to, like, say, beef cattle or something like that. So, you know, if you're talking about efficiency, you're talking about sustainability, you just can't sustain a large population on meat. I mean, we can't, the whole world would not be able to eat like we do here in the United States uh, if, if everybody were eating the, the sort of meat consumption that we have here. You know, milk and cheese, you don't involve slaughtering animals, but you certainly involve uh, in many cases, you know, keeping animals in pretty horrible conditions, um, and uh, and then on top of that, you know, you have the, as much global warming problems coming out of you know milk and cheese as you do out of the beef itself, because it's cows in both cases. You know, they, they need to be fed a whole lot of food to produce that milk, and they produce methane. You know, they, they belch methane, which is a really powerful greenhouse gas. Um, the uh, Food and Agriculture Organization found that worldwide that methane's that uh, the livestock industry is responsible for 18 percent of the total greenhouse gases. 18 percent. I mean that is more than transportation. That is more than all the cars, ships, boats, trains. 
um, it's on a worldwide basis. It's not true here in the United States, but on a worldwide basis, it's it's huge. And you know, if you're trying to to cut your your uh, um, your greenhouse gas production, you know, they, you're trying to live sustainably in that way. You can't do it without looking at your diet. You know, the, the car you drive is probably less important than the food you eat as far as cutting greenhouse gases. Peter, thank you for inviting us down to Northwest Veg tonight in this special event. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Brian, wonderful demonstration. Thank you for sharing that lovely food with us. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. Well, I'm Eugene Dendas, bringing you the tools to be sustainable today. Change your life.